stretch put your, put your feet up it's the last overcast gamer show of the year good afternoon everyone my name is abe foster i'm joined by as per usual regan harper that's our valentine and michael langdon and we've got mike back again for the for the final show we thought we'd uh, bring him back and he'd give us some more diverse opinions on uh, on the year that was 2017 <laughs> yeah we need a bit of diversity <laughs> Bit of an echo yeah, chamber, yeah. chamber sometimes is the OCG. Show. It is, it is yeah. A, yeah, yeah, echo chamber or circle jerk. Take your pick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's talk 2017, boys, because it's not quite over yet. But uh, you know, for various reasons, including me fleeing the country, um, we're having to record a bit early. And uh, I mean, what what a year! What a bloody year! It's been pretty special. Um, but it's a funny one because we've been talking about how so many great games have come out this year, and yet it's it's it kind of is w- one of those years that make you makes you think, you know what? I wish I just didn't have a life. I did wish I didn't have a job. <laughs> I wish I didn't have yeah. you know any any kind of relationships with anyone, so that I can just <laughs> play video games. Yeah. Uh, so it's I, it's kind of a double bladed or double edged sword, I think. Mm. It is almost every month I've been overwhelmed by the amount of choice on offer, mm. uh, and that has resulted in me playing very minimal amount of games this year. <laughs> uh, as you guys know, I get overwhelmed and I kind of just shut down. So um, you, it's, for you, it's kind of like that Ubisoft uh, littered map overwhelm absolutely. feeling. Yeah, with games it's in the general. Ubisoft fatigue in <laughs> in life and in, in games. Yeah, in life and games and. That just pervades my my you know everyday existence, Regan. Mm, nice, nice. Well, that's a positive start <laughs> to the podcast. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Abe, Abe, so today is a, actually kind of a special podcast in a way. Not only is it our final podcast of the year, but we're also uh, we've also got a few awards to to announce, don't we? We do, we do, absolutely. So, long time listeners of the Overcast Gamer Show, that is to say, people who've listened over a year. <laughs> uh, we'll know that we did the Overcast Gamer Awards uh, last year at 2016, and those are our special sort of brand of of, uh, of gaming goodies that we give out to those games who went above and beyond, whether that be good or bad, um, in in various forms. So we're going to do that again this year, and we've got we've got a whole host of great stuff to talk about in terms of people who've just. Uh, it just shit the bed, uh, you know, and, 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 <laughs> yeah. and their decision making. <laughs> yeah, I actually wanted to do a bit of a count up earlier on just to see because, I mean, I think sometimes inherently here at OCG we can be like, we can focus on the negatives just because yeah. that's fun to do. And I yes. wanted to actually do a quick count up of the number of awards that are actually like kind of based Good on people bad. that are fucked up. But we'll, we'll find out as we go into it. I didn't get a chance to do we'll, that, but let's... We'll, yeah. we'll crank into it. Let's just thank the gods that we don't have No Man's Sky that came out this year because that scooped most of the awards last year, um, from my memory, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> including Biggest Shit Show and Biggest Dick. Yeah, um, well, Sean Murray to, on behalf mm. of the Hello Games team took out mm. Biggest Dick, didn't he? Yeah. He did, did, yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, let's, let's crack into it. Let's go over... 2017 i thought that might be a nice way for us to kick off uh unless you guys sort of have anything that's happened in your lives that you want to want to chat about anything uh anything large or you know interesting that you got not really other than that i haven't been able to play games just because of life and you know buying a new house and that kind of thing but that's pretty boring yeah yeah here to talk about (laughs) video games and so unless anyone else has anything exciting to talk about i don't do things i've got a i've got a (laughs) minor anecdote uh i actually sold my 3ds this morning oh uh, when in we and sold it. Got my switch now, so you know, I just uh, just don't need it. There's just a bit of an anymore. argument, right, to say that like you don't really need a 3ds. You know. Yeah, yeah. it's. I mean, mm. I didn't get much use out of it either. I never really played it that much. I played Pokemon and I played some of Layton, the Professor Layton games, until I realised they were too hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> I gave up on them because <laughs> that's just the kind of person I am. Okay. But uh, no, yeah, I I popped it on one of those Facebook buy and sell groups last night, um, and got like. 20 messages from people trying wanting to buy it so I, I i popped down to my local supermarket this morning and uh did a deal with a guy who got 150 bucks <laughs> abe the king of dodgy deals in the street nice. that's that's the one and this is the week after someone in christchurch got uh, no sorry five people in christchurch got held at knife point by the same guy after he sort of tricked them into doing facebook deals 
Wait, the, what do you mean the Wait, same Christ guy? Church. So, so in, in Christchurch, there was this dude uh, on Facebook who was on one of those the Christchurch buy and sell groups, and he contacted five different people for for different various goods, and then when he met up with them, he held them at knife point. Oh, and hmm. and got stuff. And you know, kept the money kind of thing. So um, he's been arrested model. now. Yeah, yeah, mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's not the kind of reaction I was expecting. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, props to um, the armed robber. Mm. I actually sold my two DS. Um, I think it was last week. Two oh, yeah. DS. Yeah. Nice. Well, it's because yeah. I. I mean, I. I bought that first, and then I got a three DS because I decided to upgrade, and then like just my two DS sat sat around for about three years. Yeah. Um, yeah. Collecting dust, but collecting dust. yeah, got got yeah. like 130 bucks for it and sold it with a couple of games. Awesome. Nice man. Yeah. They that's seem, bloody good for a two years. Yeah, yeah, they seem to carry their resale value pretty well, eh? But then there's mm. Nintendo, right? They just never yeah. drop their prices, and I guess that carries through into the, you know, the dodgy Auckland slash Wellington deals kind of markets. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I can see why you put Auckland there first. The Auckland one is very sketchy, especially <laughs> like because. So there's, there's these buy and sell groups for pretty much every sector of Auckland. So there's north, northeast, mm. southwest kind of thing. Um, and I, I, you know, I've never, I've only ever been on the North Shore one and the West one. And the West one was was pretty shady. The North Shore ones are right. The South one, I can't even imagine. Like that must <laughs> just be shocking. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't go near that. But uh, yeah, I, I I ended up with uh, 150 bucks. I just pretty much just wanted to get rid of it. I knew it was just collecting dust. I wanted some some cash to. Um, convert into euros for me to fling around when I'm overseas. So um, pretty happy with that. Pretty happy. You realize now that you said you're going to fling it around, the, the, the euros that you get using that 150 bucks, you have to hang on to, and the only thing you can use them for is flinging around. Just hold them oh, in your hand and just or, wave them about in the air. I'll do Assassin's Creed and I'll just go around like throwing euro coins and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to distract people. Distract <laughs> Make it make it rain off some giant Victorian tower with euro coins and nice. then get arrested and stuff. Um, but yeah, let's go over let's go over some games from 2017. So we'll kick things off as you do. January, January we had Resident Evil Seven Biohazard. Now, out of us, how many people played this game? I did. Just no, you, Balthazar. Mike, just you, Balthazar. Did, you didn't. No, play no, I didn't play just it. Balthazar? And what I remember, Balthazar, you really loved this, eh? Yeah, it was as far as that genre goes. For me, it was a ten out of ten example of what those games should be. Yeah, it was. It was sort of riding on that uh, hype around the PT demo and and the sort of yeah. the forlornness of everyone after that got like culled by Konami essentially. Mm. And I normally with those sorts of games get about halfway through and then stop just because they're repetitive and there's nothing to really keep me playing and you know I just fall off them effectively. Uh, yep. But I finished I finished Resi 7 and yeah it was great fun the whole way through. Changed up enough to stay original but stayed consistent enough for you to never feel like you didn't know what you were meant to be doing um, yep. which as I've complained in the past that is my biggest yeah complaint for that genre of games is when it doesn't stay consistent and you know you don't know what you're meant to do whether you're meant to run or fight or if it's a puzzle or you just don't have an item you need to proceed but resi 7 stayed consistent the whole way through whilst managing to change up the gameplay enough to always be interesting mm. awesome and the mm. and the, the first person perspective was a was a welcome mm. a welcome change for that yeah for that, for uh, sure. franchise as well awesome man i'm yeah that i've been meaning to play that i'm not a huge fan of horror games I, I, I like the idea of them more than I actually enjoy playing them. Um, like Amnesia, I just struggled to get through that game, though I really enjoyed it. Uh, but I really do want to play Resident Evil 7 just because I've heard nothing nothing but great things about it. So I'm, mm. I'm pretty keen to pick that one up when it goes, uh, goes all discounted. Uh, we then had Gravity Rush 2, which I didn't actually play the demo of it. Mike, did you play that at all? I, I played the demo because like, I played yep. the first one. Um, but, yeah, off the back of the demo, I decided not to... <laughs> To give it a go. Yeah, I I, I liked this, the yeah. idea of the mechanics w- w- was really interesting, mm. but uh, not not my not my kettle yeah. of fish kind the, of thing. The thing that bugged me about it is probably getting a little bit nitpicky, but like the the whole gravity mecha- mechanics pretty cool, but just sort of there's a, a minor difference between like flying around and falling around. Yeah. Um, and in this like I in the first one anyway, I found it a bit janky because you're essentially like you know using gravity to fall to another place which is like basically flying but yep. to like if you needed to change your trajectory you'd have to like stop and then look look to the new to where you wanted to go and then start falling right. again mm. and yeah, i just found yeah. it quite quite that. janky you just like sort of stop go all the time yeah 
um, yeah, it's Trump not how gravity it. works. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally un- unscientific. Uh, but um, and, zero and, ten. Yeah, I mean, it was fun. Um, it just had like a lot of like collectible stuff going on, and yeah, um, didn't enjoy the combat too much. No, I didn't. I didn't yeah. either. It was very hack and slashy, and I wasn't yeah. really a fan of, of that. I mean, it, it looked like they improved it in Gravity Rush too, but yeah, I just yeah. Not your bag. Uh, yeah. No, that's cool. Balthazar, did you try that at all? Are you a Gravity Rush no. fan? Uh, no. no, I haven't played any of them. Uh, Hannah played the first one on PSP. She then tried it again on PS4, but I don't think she liked it on PS4 because it was a smaller, uh, you know, it, it just looked and felt better. Because on, on you know, uh, that exact complaint you have, Mike, about having to, you know, stop and change mm. where you're looking and everything to adjust gravity and stuff, that wasn't the case on the Vita. Um, you just kind of turned you turned around and you held the Vita above your head and below you and stuff, and that's how you changed the direction that mm. you, you know, the gravity was pushing you in. Um, so it was like really fluent, and you just flew around if you could be prepared to look like a dick by spinning <laughs> around on the spot yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, you that's um, amazing. You've so already got a PSP in your hands. Yeah, I mean, you, you yeah. could <laughs> you could do that to a certain extent with a controller, but um, like I don't think it was that fluid. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I I don't think she played the second one because after playing the first one on PS4, I don't think she liked it as much as it was on Vita. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Regan, we had Hitman the first season come out. Yes. You're now. I remember you were you were the big Hitman Hitman fan of the OCG show. Yeah. So I I I didn't end up getting the whole season, um, but I did play the original couple of ep- couple of episodes uh, when they first came out because I was quite intrigued. Yep. Um, and yeah, I thought it was good and I think they did, they, they kind of, I think they did a good job at tweaking the gameplay to work really well in the episodic way that they did it. Um, and that like each kind of, you know, large area, each episode of the game, uh, had its kind of, its, it was kind of like a massive clock that you would essentially kind of learn the inner workings of this clock and you could do all the assassinations and, um, yeah, and, and then all these various hitman kind of ways. Um, so I thought they did quite well, but it's interesting how it's kind of just, it, it sort of flopped. A lot of people are, you know, looking at Hitman as, as a big failure. Um, but I, yeah, from what I played of it, I thought it was really good. So, yeah, yeah go it, figure. It has, it has fizzled out a wee bit, and I remember that uh, the developer, I can't even, I can't think of their name at the moment. It's Ido- Idos? 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 Yeah. Idos. Guys? I think it's Idos. Um, yeah, they, they had Enix? a statement a wee while back. Well, they were just uh, they're the publisher i think all right um uh yeah i just i think just said a statement a wee while back they were just like yeah we're um we're not doing any more hitman games <laughs> they were just like oh but hitman was just given like a rebirth why why did you guys bother with that if you're not gonna not gonna keep it up but critically really really well received that yeah. game yeah i don't know so, what it was i think maybe that it was just Perhaps people didn't like the episodic thing. Um, mm. It didn't do as well as they thought it was going to do. Um, yeah. Yeah, who knows? The developer, by the way, was IO Interactive. Um, oh, IO, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it used to be IDOS and they've changed to um, yeah. to IO or been absorbed by Square Enix and rebranded or something. But yeah, uh, and then we had Yakuza 0. Now, I haven't had a chance to play this, but I am dying to play Yakuza 0. Um, anyone else played that? No, not me. no. no. Not, no, not well no. represented this year, as Yakuza. No, as no. It's, um, Yakuza looks like a just a such a fun series. <laughs> it just looks insane, like karaoke and you have a chicken as a best friend, and you know, <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like it's right up my alley, sort of thing. So I'm I'm pretty pretty keen to check that out. <laughs> uh, moving into February, we had Horizon Zero Dawn kicking things off. Now this was a uh, man. I remember when this first showed at E3, two, it must be two or three years back now, mm. immediately we were just like, oh, <laughs> not, <laughs> yeah. not that hyped for this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I think there was, was in general a bit of hype around it, wasn't there? Like, I think some, there was. It, it depends yeah. on kind of your resistance to the open, open world fatigue, I think. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was right in the peak of open world fatigue, right, when mm. this came out. Mm. But I, I remember thinking it looked quite cool. I remember... The, I mean, there was the obvious big question, which was like, what the fuck is up with all these robot dinosaurs and why why yeah. is that even a thing? Um, <laughs> I, I remember feeling relatively hyped for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah, I think it was at peak open world fatigue. Yubi was churning out those, um, 
you know the assassin's creeds like there was no tomorrow and i just i just had enough of it and i just saw another one of these and i was like <laughs> oh robot dinosaurs that's an inventive idea and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and then i think it was a bit, bit the same actually i was just like oh yeah, this game looks cool. I'll get it. <laughs> so, yeah. so, yeah, actually, it's really good. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Horizon was was a massive surprise. Mm. Um, I that was that was fantastic. I was not expecting the story to be that good. Mm. Not even remotely. I in fact, um, I think Horizon has come up um in the awards a couple of times, which kind of speaks it has. yeah <laughs> it speaks to how good good it was. I think it was kind of also the first game for me that came, like it obviously came out in February, and it was the first game that really made me think and uh, stop and go, shit, we're actually even this early in the year we're doing all right as far as kind of quality yeah. games because at that point we'd had Resi Seven. Um, Yakuza Zero had come out, Hitman. Hitman had come out, and we were, we were just like, "Oh shit, it's been really good so far. <laughs> like, yeah. this is great." And then yeah, Horizon, yeah. Horizon was um, was fantastic. Like, I, yeah, I think the thing for me about that game was, yeah, not only was the the actual sort of gameplay itself pretty fun, but it was had to be that story, right? Mm, and the pacing um, yep. was yep. was it was awesome. Mm. Um, so yeah, February got off to a good start. Absolutely. Horizon Zero Dawn also overcast game is one and only review code that we received. Very exciting times. Uh, we <laughs> yeah, that's right. that. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> awesome. High, high fives at the OCG office. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. It yeah. was beautiful. It just it just turned up at my flat in Auckland. I was like, uh, what's this? Like, I thought Regan had sent me something, or and it was from Sony. I was just like, what the? Yeah. <laughs> so they obviously pushed it really hard, eh? Like for mm. them to send a copy to yeah. us. Like, oh, totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, having a laugh, Sony. That, it, oh, man. It's awesome. But uh, no, we do it. We, did, we really appreciated that. That was awesome. I, I got to read all the press material and I felt like a real journalist. It was great. Yeah, good one. <laughs> <laughs> there was a review embargo and everything. Um, next, we had Neo. Now, I know uh, Balthazar, you, you were a fan of this, and Mike, I think. Yep. You both? Yep. Mm. Yep. And. I mean, any thoughts on Neo? It was it was everything to, that you expected, or better, or? Uh, it's about uh, everything I, expected. I never it's finished good. it. Um, it didn't actually hold me the whole way through, so I guess that's to say it wasn't as good as I'd hoped. Um, but it was cool. Like it didn't really do anything wrong. Yeah, it was it, it was me. It wasn't you, Neo. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, the story wasn't anything to really write home about. Um, but yeah, cool. Really cool. Um, like gameplay mechanics is kind of like souls but um mm. you know you're a samurai um killing demons yep. sort of Japanese like the demons. dark souls of the samurai world yeah 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 yeah, yeah nice mm. no team ninja the guys who did ninja gaiden just making their move mm, yeah. into the into the sort of i guess the souls genre if you want to call it that i mean i think that's what it was right it was by those guys um and people said it was their move into the souls genre so that was why i was interested in it but then essentially it was very much a team ninja game like it was it was ninja gaiden remaining relevant in the current day and age it wasn't a samurai souls game and that's why i think i didn't finish it because i love mm. souls games and that was much more of a ninja gaiden game than a so which there's nothing wrong with it i love ninja gaiden back in the day i just it wasn't what i expected so yeah mm. very good very good uh we also had sniper elite four now I've been I'll be dying to play this as well. I haven't got around to it. Has anyone checked this out? The only thing I know about this game is that you can shoot testicles. That is <laughs> um, correct. That's, yep. that's all I have. Like I, I did a bit of YouTubing, and yeah. basically every you know every video was basically just guys shooting nuts, <laughs> shooting balls, exploding which, knackers. <laughs> which in itself is hilarious, but I yeah. don't know. I'm not sure if there's enough of a gameplay loop there to really keep me <laughs> <laughs> keep me that you know going. There's only so many bollocks you can uh, you can turn into shrapnel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I heard there were some really cool things with the wind in that game. Um, like you had to actually adjust your aim and and everything like that based on the direction and how hard the wind was blowing, which was oh, just yeah. a really cool idea. The old, the old Coriolis effect from uh, mm. from simpsons and uh call of duty 4 i remember that's, that's that, the, that was uh, the rotation of the earth i think the coriolis effect yeah <laughs> yeah oh the they, one where the, the toilet flows the opposite direction yeah, that, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah that's the mention of it in the simpsons and then um in, in call of duty 4 you're sniping from that giant tower and he's like oh remember to take the coriolis effect into account <laughs> oh, <laughs> what <laughs> oh man i think the... that is a good game that is a good game <laughs> that is such bollocks <laughs> amazing I mean, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, so we had um, Sniper Elite 4, For Honor. Now, this was interesting because I actually really dug the demo or the beta or whatever yeah. uh, of this when I played it. Really enjoyed it. I played the, the same, I played the beta as well. And like, it was, the, the core gameplay was fun. But then, you know, yeah. like, it, how fun, that, that's the thing for me is like, how fun would it have remained? Like, it was kind of. Yeah. Yeah, it just was what it was. The the sort of the mini open maps where you were sort of doing like, you know, just smashing through um, groups of, you know, mindless enemies and that kind of thing was a bit dull. But I yeah. think the, the one that was really good was when it was just the two, there was that sus- those suspenseful kind of one-on-one battles that you could have. Yep. Those, those were yep. quite cool. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think there needed to be, it's the classic thing where you have like an online game that just, there's just not quite enough there to really be worth it. Does yep. that make sense? Yep. Yeah. I, I, that game, I I can almost... I mean, it's not going to be the sole cause for it failing, but uh, a large reason, uh, in my understanding, that game failed was because of Dark Souls. Not because they're related in any way, but because the Dark Souls community or content creation community on YouTube and stuff thought that For Honor would be the new source of online sort of memes and PvP stuff for them to create content. So they all jumped on that. And when everyone saw that those guys were on that, they were like, oh, this is a toxic Dark Souls community. I'm steering clear. So then only the Dark Souls community played it. But then they realized, oh, this isn't the Dark Souls-esque meme online gameplay we thought it was going to be. So they all left as well. (laughs) So the wrong community got involved at the start. That scared everyone else away and then that community was like oh this isn't what we thought at all and they left too so i actually think dark souls killed for honor by its community being toxic shits and scaring everyone else away (laughs) (laughs) the real scary thing about the the real horror of dark souls is the community it is Mm. (laughs) just filled with dark souls nice (laughs) <laughs> nice well yeah for honor also had massive <laughs> massive network issues mm. um you i remember that i pretty much didn't work like a good chunk of the time um and i remember people being pretty miffed about that so that definitely definitely didn't help it uh, i've seen it at like 20 bucks for jb hi-fi recently and mm. and so it's you know i mean it's not doing particularly well it's sort of like the steep of one one-on-one pvp <laughs> battles but <laughs> <laughs> it's weird a very weird point of comparison but uh we've uh we've also got night in the woods which i still haven't played but i really really want to it's a it's a sort of little, have you guys heard of this game no no night in the woods it's a it's an indie game and it's sort of a little um i guess it's a side-scrolling kind of adventure game where you are sort of anthropomorphized animals um and it's just a community living out in the woods and just dealing it's like a coming of age film but with anthropomorphized animals essentially that's the best way to describe it is um oh, yeah, yeah, like a yeah. teenager dealing issues and things like that but um, apparently it's really good and i'm really keen to play it but i just haven't haven't found the time yet and uh slash it hasn't been on a good enough sale for me so still waiting <laughs> waiting on that one. cut the prices, uh, guys. moving <laughs> yeah i reckon mm. moving into march uh k- kicking it off with a banger one two switch <laughs> came out in march <laughs> Uh, I I got some time with One Two Switch a wee while back, and it is it is one of the most fun games you can play with people, and I would imagine one of the mo- very most depressing experiences you can have by yourself, <laughs> just in general, not even in gaming, just in general. Are you able it's, to? <laughs> worse than sitting at home with yeah. nothing to do. Yeah, are you able to actually play it by yourself? I figured they were all yeah, well. No, you, you totally can. It's just you'll be sitting there with a with someone who's not doing anything. Like you can still play it with one person, but there's a there's not going to be any sort of competition there whatsoever. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's tough for people yeah. like me that have no friends. So yeah. <laughs> so there's no like AI you play against. I'm just no, imagining no, it's no. the the the, the <laughs> first fighting game with where they got the big spring. Oh, arms. Oh, arms. Oh, arms. Oh, oh, yeah, we'll no, get, arms we'll get to arms up. later on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> arms arms will come along. But uh, one, two, switch. I just want to talk about that a little bit because that was a that was a really baffling thing. I mean, when what? A, why wasn't it boxed in with with the switch? And B, what th- what made Nintendo think they could get away with releasing something like that, <laughs> and everyone would just accept it? It's like a straight to di- straight to you know bargain bin DVD interactive game. 
yeah, yes. like a tech demo kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, it's it's bizarre. One of the games that you can play, there's like I don't know, twenty party games or something on it. One of them is literally called Joy-Con Rotation. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not. <laughs> yeah, it screams of tech demo. Eh? It's yeah, it's a real yeah. shame. It's kind of like they developed the Switch, and then all the developers for Nintendo spent like six months or so just playing around with all the hardware just to get used to the APIs yep. and things. And they were yep. like, "Hey, well, we've like made some." Oh, you know, some stuff that's a little bit fun. Let's just bundle it all together and we'll charge 100 bucks for it. Like, <laughs> sweet. <laughs> yeah, because Nintendo stuff never devalues. One, two switch is always going to be 80 to $90. Just keep that in mind. <laughs> Amazing. Um, the, the only other thing I want to talk I think I've talked about this briefly on, on another podcast, but it has just a very, very odd sexual undertones to everything in one, two switch. Really? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Really odd. So one game is sort of a safe cracking game and you have to twist the joy con and you feel like a little rumble when you've when you've hit the right spot so to speak and uh and you sort of <laughs> when you do like when you when you hit that spot there's a there's like a exhale of of air like a woman oh like really a, sort of yeah like really really soft <laughs> sort of like the, the not, safe cracking a little bit but they've just done it in a sort of I, i'm not making way. this up i swear to god it's it's like a <sighs> like that sort of thing. <laughs> It, it's really weird. Oh, man. It's really odd. Soundbite of the podcast. The... I'm taking that out and making some meme videos. <laughs> oh, man. Remix There's another the one theme. where you just shake up a soda bottle, and when you, sh- you know, you're doing the obvious jerking off motion for a, a good minute, and then when eventually you do it, just explodes with soda, which just had to be white, because of course it did. <laughs> it's just, Nintendo is just having an absolute laugh. It's pretty good. <laughs> wow. Amazing. I think that'll make for a great OCG video as us all playing one two switch and I'd I'd love to, to organize that. But um yeah, very <laughs> strange. Very strange, confusing game. Uh we also had Just Dance twenty seventeen. I don't know why I wrote that one down because we've all oh, obviously we all played that. <laughs> we don't even need to talk about it really. So Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's self explanatory. Uh we then had Zelda Breath of the Wild. Now I think we've all... Mike, have you played Breath of the Wild? Have you got a Switch, Mike? No, I don't have a Switch. No. You don't have a Switch. Ah, uh, okay. So Regan and, and Balthazar have both finished Breath of the Wild, correct? Correct. Yeah, yeah, both finished it. I've played about an hour, I would say, of it and was really enjoying it until Mario Odyssey came along and stole my entire life. Um, but, yeah, I mean, is there anything more to say about Breath of the Wild other than it is? Yeah. It has resurrected people's faith in open world games? Uh, I, yeah, not really i mean well i think we'll talk a little, bit, a little bit about it more later on um but yeah it came and it changed things <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be a back of the box quote yeah. there you go <laughs> that's gonna be a one two switch quote as well uh but yeah Zelda breath of the wild absolutely fantastic game by uh the reckoning of, of balthazar and Regan. we then had snipper clips which my god i love that game it is so much fun again another switch game where you sort of uh cut shapes out of one another it's multiplayer game and just sort of reaffirmed my i don't know it reignited my my desire to play multiplayer games local only but Mm. uh you know still it it was a hell of a lot of fun snipper clips um balthazar you played a bit bit of this right yeah we finished it as well yep yeah it's it's just a super easy low stakes kind of game that you can play with people and yell at them yeah um, it's just a cool cool bit of uh bit of mechanics really eh? i played a little bit of it with uh <laughs> abe's perfect game yelling at people <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is what's miss- missing from your sort of multiplayer experience abe is couch co-op yeah. and the ability to yell at other people like <laughs> uh, to be fair i kind of just yell i don't really yell at anyone i just yell in general yeah yeah <laughs> totally yeah spin spin yeah yeah just just at the universe uh near automata also came out in march so i mean already we're only up to march and my god the quality is is insane uh now near automata or automata still haven't figured out which way you're supposed to say that but um mike and balthazar you guys both you know you'd lay on the line for this game right this is a this is a top Mm. top one yeah yeah (laughs) good feedback good feedback (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yep. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a good game. Yeah, yeah good game. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, did you guys sort of know that this was a game changer 
when you played it sort of thing was it immediately like a holy shit this is something i've never really seen before and this is really special Mm. probably about a third of the way in is where that happens Mm. for me at least i because i you know playing the the core gameplay when you first start playing isn't what you know makes it so special so playing it it's a great fun game but it's yeah probably from about a third of the way in where you realize what sort of a game it is Mm. It's, it starts sure. mucking around with yeah, um, sure preconceptions real. and things like that. Mm. Mm. That's awesome. I Yeah, I, I really cannot wait to play that game. That's another one I've just been keeping an eye on just because of you guys just keep raving about it and constant comparisons to Metal Gear Solid 2, which I still think is probably my favorite Metal Gear Solid just because it's so <laughs> batshit insane. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I finished um, yeah. it for a second time recently, actually. Near Automata. Yeah, yeah, I went through oh, it on nice hard mode. So. It's good fun. Bloody hell. Have you got the platinum on that one? Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a given. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is Mike with the superpower to somehow play every game within a shorter amount of time than it than it takes someone to finish one. <laughs> I, I just don't understand how that's yeah. even possible. <laughs> uh, we had Tom Rick. Oh, no. I've written this down wrong. Tom Recon's Ghost Clancy Wild. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that. I was like, just, just roll with it. Just yeah. Roll with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Tom Recon's Ghost Clancy Wildlands. I played the demo of this. Uh, very <laughs> underwhelming. It was just, it was just a Ubisoft open world again. Like they claimed that this was going to be. Uh, I mean, I don't know if they claimed. I remember seeing it at E3, and there was all those paid voice actors just being like, "Oh, get in the chopper, yeah, we're going to do this mission." And it was just like, "Oh God." <laughs> <laughs> get to the chopper. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure someone said that at one point, and I just cringe. Yeah, man, brutal. But um, did anyone play any amount of this other than any more than I did, which was probably about an hour? Nope. No, no. I don't touch no. Ubisoft games. So. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We had Star Trek Bridge Crew, which I don't think anyone played either, which was a, the Star Trek VR game, which kind of looks like a PS2 game. A, all, like, really bad looking All I've seen of that was, like, a brief clip on YouTube, and um, it was a bunch of bunch of mates playing, like, probably about our age. And then, um, so they log into a game, and then um, the um, you just hear this, like, little kid, sounds like about eight, being like, I'm going to be the pilot or whatever. <laughs> I'm going to be the captain. <laughs> I'm going to fly the ship. And they're just like, nope. And just like, well, log out. <laughs> oh, man. It's brutal. Uh, maybe the only people who have... Because it's a VR exclusive game, right? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm, I, th- I want to say it, it I don't see why you'd want to play that game if it wasn't in VR. Like <laughs> controlling the... like the, the Just pushing buttons, essentially. It's just a button pushing simulator. I'm just, thinking, just trying to imagine it. It's just the, it sounds like the greatest bit of YouTube content yeah. ever. Nope. Nope. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Oh, man. That, that's where all the like the kids who used to be COD kids and Halo kids have moved over to Star, Star Trek Bridge Crew. <laughs> uh, March was also the month of the old Mass Effect Andromeda, which... We'll, we'll, we have an award talking about that one later on as well. But, um, I mean, just, just brief thoughts, lads, on this one. Bit of a clusterfuck, really. Mm, mm. Just no care, put in, eh? You know? Yeah. Just, mm. oh, let's just do it. Put Mass, the name Mass Effect on it. You know, away we go. Like, just, uh, you know, no no heart, I think, mm. was the problem with that game. It was just just done. Just kind of it, it wasn't even a it wasn't even a like because i remember they showed that terrible e3 video of people working on concept art and like you know flash looking office blocks and things like that which oh, yeah. appeals to no one do you guys remember that at one of the e3s it was like oh yeah we've got a new mass effect and uh here's some like wireframes like oh sweet get mm-hmm. hype yeah <laughs> mm. um terrible way to show that game off and then yeah two two years later or whatever it, it was a mess it just came out and it seems like they put uh you know ea's um bioware's sort of c team on it even mm-hmm. just garbage it, it just became a joke it is still a joke that game just very depressing time in gaming it really was it got really everyone was just really angry and disappointed and it was not a great time that part of that part of march but then we had the antithesis of mass effect andromeda (laughs) snake pass (laughs) which man what a game 
What an absolute cracker of a game you that played is. this game. I, you might. No, I was thinking about it. No, you were thinking yeah, about it. Oh, I was right. thinking about it, but right. didn't get much further. Than I, that, so. I pre-ordered this game. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> hey, breaking all those rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I pre-ordered two games this year actually, and they were the day before they came out. I pre-ordered them. <laughs> so I just want to preload and what sort. Of, mm. But um, man, I love this game so much. It's so much fun. It's so colourful. Um, so easy to just you know pick up and put down. It's only about uh, 10, to, ten to twelve hours sort of thing. Amazing soundtrack. Goofy as fuck looking snake, hummingbird <laughs> assistant. I love that um, the goofy snake is like is a key part a pro. Of it for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's to a be, pro. It's a yeah, big pro. I was going to mention the goofy snake as well though because he just slithers around with that cheesy fucking grin on his face. <laughs> I love it. You can use the D pad to change his expressions. <laughs> so good, so good, so much fun. Um, only very few qualms with that game, and that's there's not enough music from David Weiss uh, from from Donkey Kong and and ukulele and banjo kazooie. Amazing, amazing composer. Not enough music from him. Um, and then there's for some reason spike pits in that game, which just seemed completely outrageous. Given that the only penalty is really you falling, as should only really be the penalty is, is just falling down to the bottom and having to start again. The spike pits is just redundant because they just kill you and you just go back to the start and it. It's a very, very strange design decision, but the rest of that game was phenomenal, and I gave it a nine when I reviewed it on overcastgamer.com. Um, so, yeah, really, really stoked with that. Uh, the last game we had in March, which this was actually the release date for the PC version, uh, Thimbleweed Park. Um, I suppose we can talk about that now as well because it came out on PS4 a couple of months ago, but came out originally in March. I really loved it as well. Return to form for the point-and-click adventure. Ron Gilbert back doing what he does best. Uh, logic to the puzzles, which a lot of the the previous point and clicks that, that was sort of my qualm with with a lot of the uh, mm. broken age and, and things like that was just yeah in, I, inventory mm. arbitrary inventory mashing essentially. Is yeah, what, what I recall I recall your review on OCG.com actually um, for broken age. Broken age, yeah, and just being four out of ten, just raging, <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like not okay. It went from. Yeah. No, it went from I really like this game. It was it was hovering around at eight, and then I finished, and I was like, it was terrible. Yeah, you know what? That was shite. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it lost four points in the latter half of the game. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, very disappointing. But no, Thimbleweed Park is great. It, it's a lot of fun, and I enjoyed the very meta joke of literally picking up specks of dust, uh, pixel hunting. So <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that, was, that was really yeah, it was good. Uh, moving to April, we have Persona 5 kicking off April, which is insane. Again, another top quality AAA game. Uh, anyone play the Balthazar? You've you've played you've watched someone play a little bit of this. Yeah, I've watched most of it through. Yeah. Didn't you go straight? Does it look good. like it's? Is it is it worthy of that acclaim? <laughs> that, that people yeah, yeah. It's. I mean, it looks like it's probably up there at least with the JRPGs of the year as being you know one of if not the best yep mm. awesome Mike yeah. no this out? no um, I mean the thing that put me off about it was um, just that they're all like high school kids it was like oh, yeah. why, why, why do I want to like play as much of high school kids like <laughs> mm. I don't know I might, I might give it a go at some stage because it, it does look cool so the thing that I that I recall most vividly about Persona Five is the failed OCG stream. Um, <laughs> thanks to oh god, oh man, <laughs> thanks to the ridiculous uh, control Atlas, of it. Yeah. A bit. <laughs> but um, other than that, it looks good. I'd like to play it, um, mm. just not online, not streaming it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even I'm intrigued by this game in that uh, just just the idea of the psychological sort of aspect to it where you you go into these mind palace kind of things and you explore these the, the mm. it's kind of like psycho it's got the psychonauts kind of thing going on there which i really mm. really dig um like the idea of that but yeah we'll pick that up at some point as well it's a hundred hour game so christ it's going to be have to be the only thing i play that year <laughs> um <laughs> we had Parappa the rapper on ps4 which i played the demo of and enjoyed but i uh, didn't feel the need to pick up the full game already played that back in the day uh, they just made it look more lifelike paper, really. You know, the paper had better texture, and <laughs> it's all well and good. Um, Bulletstorm Full Club Edition, which, I mean, Bulletstorm was an okay game back in the day. Um, I played, again, in one I played the demo of and, and kind of enjoyed as a bit of a filler-type game, but not too much to say about that one either. 
ukulele um now this was a interesting game because I thought this was going to be my game of the year, and I still thought that up until I got to about the second or third stage of that game. And then I realized, no, it's it's really not going to be. Um, it sort of lost its grip on on what was fun, and, and it sort of it tried to honor the tropes of the 64 genre in ways that, in the worst possible ways, essentially it kept all the really annoying shit from that era, uh, but sort of made that the joke. Like, oh, isn't it fun? That you that you have to walk through entire hub worlds to get to the next level, isn't isn't that really fun? You know, like, no, it's, it's real. No. <laughs> There's a fucking reason we stopped doing this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, but the, yeah, the first level of that game is amazing, um, and then it just kind of goes downhill quite a bit. From I, I got up to the final boss, and I just I don't care. I'm not going to finish that game because I just don't care mm. um, about the about the the story is garbage as well. Um, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh outlast 2 which we did a stream on and balthazar uh i remember you really enjoyed that and it was also incredibly terrifying yeah well it's hard to say if things are terrifying or not because if you watch me play them like in the stream i i employ the same tactic to all those games which is if something is coming up at me which you can't kill i just turn around crouch and face <laughs> the wall <laughs> and hope it goes yeah. away um <laughs> So, yeah. No, I, yeah. that's one that I never got around to finishing as well, actually. I, I reached a point where it's kind of like... It, I guess it just got a bit samey as you went on. You know, the, yeah, yeah. the, the levels felt very similar, um, both in objective and layout and everything. So, yeah, yeah it, it didn't have that sort of... I don't really know what it was. That thing that the first Outlast had that just made it feel... Um, quite different i guess the different villains as you go through you know you went to different wings in the asylum that had different villains for that stage um and that just made it all feel more unique the whole way through whereas this one was for the most part just one crazy giant lady with the well, i don't remember what it was the cross-shaped pickaxe thing the whole way through yeah uh, yeah i remember really enjoying you watching uh, watching you play that on the stream um, but not really something I would I would see myself playing in, in general. It just seemed mm. a bit too a bit too intense for me. Um, but yeah, seemed like a decent game. We had What Remains of Edith Finch, which was another game that I that I, I played. Um, I didn't play a huge amount of games this year, but you know there was a few in there. That was from the developer of the Unfinished Swan, uh, which I really really enjoyed. Um, two or three years ago, I think that game came out. And it's a real. I, I love what remains of Edith Finch. It's really good. It's just you exploring a house and sort of finding people's diaries and delving into their pasts and learning how these people, um, you know, their demise came about. Essentially, learning how how each of these family members died, and playing a sort of different game. And and every sort of every diary uh, utilizes a bunch of different mechanics. And and um, yeah, you just learn about their about their past and stuff. It's a really really cool game. Really fun. Good mystery behind it some really weird there's there's a really cool bit where you have to use uh both both control sticks and sort of use both parts of your brain kind of thing like you have to do two things at once essentially you have to mm. navigate a maze with a little boat on an ocean and at the same time you have to chop a bunch of fish in a factory because you're doing this mindless repetitive job which i can relate to now um and you sort of have to get rid of these fish heads and, and throw them off the the side whilst you're also just playing this little mini game where you never get this boat through this maze because this guy's just gone bit into the recesses of his mind to escape this mind numbing job. Really, really cool, interesting ideas in that <laughs> game. Really dig it. Yeah. Uh we also had uh Balthazar Psychopath's Mandatory Happiness. Mm. This was I played that you, one. You played that one, yeah. <laughs> what what was that thoughts on that? Uh it was kind of like a a puzzle solvy graphic novel where you had to so so for the most part you were just watching a story unfold but you yep. had to pay attention to everything because you would reach you know pivotal choice moments and it's not one of those you know oh every choice blah blah, blah future of the game it was like the choice would only be relevant to that particular decision but if you hadn't paid, there were too many options for you to get lucky and guess the right thing. So if you hadn't paid attention to every detail of the case so far that you were trying to solve, you'd probably fuck it up kind of thing. Um, right. So it might be, for example, 
this person keeps giving you, uh, you know, the, the killer or the person who's about to commit the murder maybe sends you voice recordings of, of, you know, where to go and what to do. And if you listen to them carefully, you might hear a sound in the background every now and again. So when it gets to the point where you're in the building and you're like, we have two minutes before he commits the murder and we need to find what room in this 10 story, 100 room building he's in you need to think back to every instance of the room you've heard the voice clips you've heard or maybe tiny things you've seen so that when you look in on the map of the layout of the whole building you're like okay this is the room he'll be in kind of thing so you just have to basically point on the map as the one place you're going to look so you've only got two minutes so it's one of those things where it's just really long unfolding story but you have to remember every detail for when you get to the actual interactive part of it as <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is that a good game design decision well i mean if you if you like visual novels it's 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 a good visual novel so i'd say okay. like is it a good game design decision well it's pretty typical for a, a, a way to play a graphic novel genre of game um yep. so if you like those games then yes you would like this one very good very good um we also had little nightmares which was another indie game which i i'm really i really want to play having a time um which is a sort of puzzle platformer very similar vibes to Inside and, and the Play Dead games, Limbo as well. Um, a l- bit more colourful than both those games. But yeah, it looks, looks really interesting. It's just sort of macabre. Um, I don't know. There's like weird giant dudes reaching around and trying to grab you as you're running through puzzles and, and, and platforming <laughs> and things like that. It's yeah, like really odd. <laughs> it does. It, yeah, it looks really, actually looks really <laughs> disturbing. <laughs> It looks incredibly disturbing, and I'm I'm really keen to play that. But um, <laughs> Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was the last thing we had in April to finish that off, which you know ever that was a system seller for for people picking up a Switch. Um, and I still I haven't picked that up yet, but I will eventually because you know I want me and my my friends to be able to play on picnic tables at 11 p.m. and on basketball courts. Mm, yeah. Um, so yeah. And stop the whole that. party, and you know just turn all the music down so you can play some Mario Kart. <laughs> With your mates. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah. The one. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Uh, moving into May, we had Prey. Now, um, I know Mike and myself are big advocates of this game. Mike, you yep. picked up Prey around release time as well? No, only maybe about a month ago. So oh, it's, true. Yeah, nice it's, one. It's, yeah. one of the most, it's the most recent game I've finished. Um, yep. And yeah, really enjoyed it. Just sort of like um, the, the sort of freedom it gives you. So you're on a big space station and... You can just um, sort of wander around and you slowly unlock new areas, uh, get new abilities, which um, let you, you know, solve puzzles in different ways. So there's, there's a lot of different yeah. ways you can approach things. Um, and just sort of, yeah, like really, really sort of smart puzzle solving and world traversal kind of thing. Um, and yeah, pretty, pretty the interesting glue, The glue cannon is, is quite game changing. Yeah, I really yeah. thought that was awesome. A really cool tool to, to incorporate and be able to like, you know, freeze enemies and also build your own platforms, essentially. Yeah, yeah. I also really like the, um, it was the Huntress Bolt Caster, which is, is basically a Nerf gun. And so oh, you got, yes. <laughs> you got these, like, little security booths, which are, like, locked from the inside. Um, but you got, like, a tiny little little window, um, you know, that people would pass papers through. So you sort of, like, crouch and, like, aim at the computer screen um, with the the Nerf gun, to, and like shoot shoot the screen to like unlock the door. Awesome. You do like, like little things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. To like help you get around and get into sort of like places to. Is it to is it jump yourself. scary with the thing where you know you rock into a room and the stapler tries to eat your face off? Is it? That? Yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Because you got you got the um, I can't even remember what they're called now. Um, the Typhon. Which is the like mimic. shape, yeah, mimics. The mimics the like shape changing alien guys, mm. which you know they'll disguise themselves as like coffee cups and just every everyday items. Um, yeah, they'll like jump out at you every now and then. Uh, and there's there's a couple of like um, scripted moments as well. I think we're like uh, one that where you're going up an elevator and just it all goes dark and everything stops and then the lights come on and there's a fucking Trash can, really yeah. just a trash can messy. sitting in the corner. You're like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's one of the cool things as well. Is like, um, like way back when I played the demo, it was like my first experiences. Like, you know, you got the the aliens, and um, you walk into a room, and there's like, you know, a bunch of desks and stuff, and then one, yeah. one, one desk has two chairs behind it. You think, wait a minute, mm. so like hit one of the um the chairs with a wrench, mm. and it's a, an alien. You're just like, yes, got it. Like, <laughs> so, awesome. A little bit like that. Yeah, I, it's I, 
I felt like a madman playing that game at point say because <laughs> I'd just run into a bathroom and I'd see, you know, a, a, a bucket and a mop and some toilet rolls and things, and I'd just start laying into them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you do just that. start you do whacking around, everything. Like, whacking. <laughs> and you feel, you feel like a right numpty when none yeah. of them are mimics as yeah, well. Yeah. You're just like, oh, you guys got me. <laughs> it's <laughs> really awesome game, man. Eh? I was very surprised with, with Prey um, in that it's sort of tumultuous history. Um, you know, Prey 2 was cancelled back in the day. Mm. Prey reboot came out of nowhere and it has nothing to do with the previous Prey games. Mm. Um, but I really like the the story in Prey. Um, really mm. caught me while I was playing it. I, I haven't actually finished it, but I intend to go back to it. Um, there was just too much coming out this year. But yeah, really dig it. That was one of Bethesda's probably crown and glory this year, mm. I would say. Maybe yeah, a bit underrated a bit more to say. Well. I'm not sure. Um, like... I'd say so. Yeah, yeah I don't mm. think it did that well, to be honest, man. Um, mm. Just looking at the at the sort of, in terms of monetary, um, you know, financial gain kind of thing for them. It's uh, yeah, it, it was not a flop, but it didn't didn't exceed expectations or anything like that. So, mm. yeah, it's a bit disappointing because it's a bloody good game. Uh, yeah. We had Minecraft on Switch, which no one cares about. We had <laughs> Justice Two. No one pick, No one's really a fighting game person, are they? No. Nah. No, uh, I don't think not so. until yeah. June. Apparently, apparently, quite good, but again, I don't care about superheroes, and I don't care about fighting games, so it's not a good mix. <laughs> uh, we had Rhyme, which is a, a, another sort of puzzle platformer, which I will pick. Up, I'll be picking that up on Switch because that'll be perfect for me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, That's kind of my idea with that one as well. Just you know, leave it until it's on the right platform. Hmm. Yep, yep. Really looking forward to that. There's there's so many. There's a few titles on Switch that I'm really I've just been waiting for these to get like Shovel Knight is one I've just been stopping myself buying so many times. And I'm like, no, no, you'll be able to play that on Switch. It'll be perfect on Switch. Yeah. And, Hollow um, Knight's so going to Switch, that. isn't it? What is? Hollow Knight? Uh, oh, I, th- I think so. Really? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think, uh, awesome. I've been yeah. waiting for it to come out on PS4, but I think they're releasing it on Switch first. Oh, mm. that's unheard of, anyway. pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Third party third party going to switch first that's awesome hollow knight has a great art style i really like the look of that game yep Mm. um we also had friday the 13th the game which again that looks like a lot of fun and i like a lot of the mechanics you could you're either playing as a camp uh camp camper or a a counselor or a um (laughs) or jason and you can you if you're Jason, you obviously have to hunt down the, the, the counsellors and if you're the counsellors, you have to hide away from Jason. But the, the really cool things I like is that it's all sort of multiplayer and there's things like you can only communicate with people if you're within a certain distance of them um, in terms of chatting through the headset. Or if you're far away, you need a walkie-talkie and then you can communicate with, with them over a long distance. Like Just mm-hmm. ideas like that I really, really like. Um, but that, that game has apparently had a bit of trouble as well. Uh, so it wasn't that well received, unfortunately. But cool concept. Maybe just, I don't know, get your shit together in terms of network issues and things like that. <laughs> uh, June, moving in halfway through the year. <laughs> it seems like we've just been through about five years <laughs> of games. Um, Tekken 7, which again, no one's really into fighting games. I played it. No really cares. <clears throat> Did you? Yeah. I enjoyed it somewhat. Does it? But it, didn't, it, yeah? it, it didn't really last very long. Like, yeah. Finished yeah, it and then. Can yeah. imagine. I think it's the kind of game where you would have a great time if you lived in like a second year flat at university and you and all your mates yep. could just yeah. drink beers and play Tekken. But yep. if yep. you're just sitting about by yourself, mm. like like I would be with no friends, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, it is yeah. what it is. The disposable income millennials uh, mm. not not on board with Tekken 7. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dirt 4, Regan, that was, that's you. Yeah, Dirt 4 um, I played for a good couple of weeks and yep. it was okay it was definitely a bit of a it was a hard pill to swallow for me in some ways because i love the simulator side of racing games and dirt 4 was definitely a step backwards and towards arcadey stuff when compared to uh dirt rally from a couple of years before yep. uh so it was okay and i'd imagine that there are plenty of people out there who would have loved it if they're into that kind of thing um it's I struggled with some sort of handling issues where I felt like the cars were, they were kind of, it was too arcadey and I felt like I couldn't drive them properly, how they would drive, you know, as I expected. Um, right. But yeah, it was fine. Like if you're into that sort of game, then then cool, you probably enjoy it. Um, and there were enough modes and things in there for it to be quite good. So solid, solid game, um, just 
perhaps wasn't quite my cup of tea, I guess. But yeah, there you go. Nice, nice. Codemasters, right? Codemasters, yep. Codemasters, yep. Awesome. Uh, we had Wipeout, Wipeout Omega Collection, which, again, I, I remember loving Wipeout back in the day. Mm. I played the demo of Omega Collection, and I, I just think I'm too old. I just don't have the hand-eye coordination for these sorts of games anymore, and it's all too fast, <laughs> and everything's a blur, and there's some pounding EDM soundtrack, and I was just overwhelmed, and I stopped playing it. Come away with a headache, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty much, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like going to a rave in your bedroom it's not that fun you know <laughs> it's just <laughs> it's a single person silent disco but uh we had arms strange d- i'm not convinced anyone played that game. i hope no one's played it <laughs> yeah um, uh, arms is an odd one if you haven't heard about arms what's going on but anyway um yeah nintendo switch i guess they were as it sounded to me like it was another one of those things that probably came up in their six months of playing around with the hardware and someone went yeah this is kind of fun we could probably mm. make like a like a thing out of this it might be like splatoon yeah um and then it just kind of well from what i understand it just wasn't so. it's it's essentially mike tyson's punch out but with switch controls and you know it's like mike tyson's punch out of for a new generation <laughs> kind of thing mm. <laughs> like, 25 years after that game came out. Except Mike Tyson just, with like springy, controllable yeah, arms. Yeah, lolly, lollipop legs and all sorts of crazy Nintendo toys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bizarre, bizarre game. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood. Balthazar, this is you. Mm. This is yep. uh, was that in June. You're, you're quite happy with this? I am. Yeah, oh, you, yeah well, I suppose you still are because it's, it's an ongoing, it's an ongoing thing. <laughs> yep, it did what it said it would. Added more yep. content. Stuff is still coming out for it. It's good. Mm. Nice. Yeah, nice. did its job. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Good. Did what it said on the packet. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Uh, Crash Bandicoot's Insane Trilogy. Now, Mike, you you picked this up. You played this quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, I played through um, all three of those games. So. You played them all nice, through? Nice, man. Me too. No, nah, Me nah. too. Didn't? <laughs> Shit. Come nah, on. No, well, I mean, to platinum them, you got to do the um, the speed uh, runs at every level. So, uh, so like... What know, a slap in the face that is, eh? Yeah. I hate speed runs. Yeah, yeah. So I did, like, you know, speed runs of about two levels, and it was like, nah. Even, <laughs> even like, the very first level of Crash Bandicoot 1 took me, yeah. like, 10 tries or something to actually get the... Um, the, the little thing 10 tries yeah something like that because you gotta you gotta do it in like very specific way to actually get do it fast enough right yeah so it's like you gotta do that with you know, every jump has to be precise yeah yeah and, yeah. and yeah. i think there was everyone's um most hated level um oh, the, the, yeah I, I just you know bro, had that bro in my to mind nowhere. yeah the bridge the bridge one bridge, yeah bridge to bridge to, bridge to yeah, yeah. yeah so i just Snare had that in my mind and i was I'm, Nah, just not going to do it. <laughs> not going to give it a go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but Crash I, Bandicoot, while the Insane Trilogy, especially Crash 1, sort of reminded me how ruthless older games were. Yeah. I mean, Crash 2 was my jam back in the day, and I got 100% on that for, you know, for about the fourth or fifth time nice. in my life. So. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I was quite taken aback with, by how much both sequels improved on, on their predecessors. Crash 1... Mm. After I finished that, I was like, oh, that's pretty good. And I played Crash 2, I was like, Crash 1 ain't shit. <laughs> and I played <laughs> Crash 3, and I was like, Crash 2 ain't shit. <laughs> it's yeah. just great. But they also got a lot easier as they went along, I noticed. Yeah, yeah, and that's definitely. probably why I liked the third one the most, because it was the easiest. Mm. But, uh, yeah, really enjoyed it. It did exactly what it set out to do. I think that was pretty much a flawless remake of um, of the Crash Bandicoot trilogy. Mm. Would you say so, Mike? Yeah, yeah, definitely agree there. Yeah, it was just exactly exactly what we what we wanted. So props to I think it was Vicarious Visions who did that yep, one. Yep. Um moving into July, another Final Fantasy. We had Final Fantasy twelve, the Zodiac Age. Mm. Regan, I remember you picked I, this up. I did pick it up and I played twenty hours of it, maybe. Um yeah. and then stopped. Uh, just because I don't know what it was I, I just got a big old belt of nostalgia which is exactly the currency these these games are trading in yeah. and I was yep. like I need to I need to go pick out this fucking game I had a great time <laughs> with this game I need to go I need to go get it and I literally went to the warehouse at like 9 o'clock at night one night because I just I was like nah I was trying to stop myself from getting it I was like nah I'm going to get it and then played it for a bit and, and just kind of 
Yeah, it, it ebbed away, and um, and I've just looking at it. Had your fill? Yeah, I probably will go back and finish it at some stage, but um, yeah, and it is what it is. It's just the same game with um, you know some tweaked systems and and higher res textures. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And did Mike and Balthazar, you guys, you guys picked this up as well? Yeah, I played it. I, I finished it again. So yeah. nice. Got your money's nice. worth. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Balthazar, was this was this one of yours? Uh, I played it, yeah. Didn't finish yep. that one, but made some progress. Nice, nice. It seems <laughs> that seems to be the gen, the consensus with uh, Final Fantasy Twelve is yeah, yeah, I played it, and then I stopped. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Apart from Mike, who just finishes everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I finished this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after that, we had Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered, uh, which I I bought because I love 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 Call of Duty Four Modern Warfare. Um, and exactly, you know, great remake of this game. Again, it was it was a fantastic remaster. Sorry, it was a fantastic remaster of um, COD Four. Did exactly what it needed to do. And the uh, what was it called? Advanced? No. What was the other Call of Duty called that was tacked onto it? The Infinite Warfare. Infinite Warfare. Sorry, like, mm. Infinite Warfare. Yeah, that's yeah. the one. That was actually all right. Like yeah. that was fine. The the story behind it that wasn't as terrible as everyone was thinking it was like, oh cold in space it's gonna be shit that wasn't shit <laughs> yeah. it was it was actually kind of fun yeah yeah um, i played through that so, um a couple of months ago i think um so i picked it up yeah. for about 25 bucks which is um i think about appropriate value for it so <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean yeah it was, it was, I, I really enjoyed it um but you know you play yeah. through the the campaign once and then you, you're done with it pretty much so. yeah. yeah yeah no i, I yeah, agree. definitely enjoyed I, it I have, I have no desire to, to revisit the, the Infinite Warfare part of, of that Call of Duty uh, yeah. experience. <laughs> but um, the Call of Duty 4 is, is awesome, and it's great to play that game again. Uh, we had <clears throat> Splatoon 2, which, Balthazar, you, you were all over that? Yeah. Yeah, it was a good one. It was like, uh, like Splatoon 1, but more variety <laughs> in, in guns and stuff, and on the Switch. So. Nice. Kind of nice. what everyone exactly. yeah. Two paint rollers instead of one. <laughs> yeah, they did add dual wielding. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. I, I just, I, I don't know. I, I love Nintendo's. Just don't give a fuck about anything else. What anyone else is doing, we're just gonna do our own thing, and, and everyone enjoys it because they just stand by their decisions. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> um, Fortnite, which I haven't actually played any of, but it, it's it's a phenomena at the moment. A lot mm. of people are playing Fortnite. Have you guys tried this at all? I haven't tried it, um, but you know, a couple of friends. Uh, playing it quite a bit at the moment <clears throat> yeah but um i mean it's online multiplayer so yeah <laughs> yeah yeah I, I feel i feel the same way mike yeah it's like well it's good for everyone else <laughs> it's not for me um all right well we'll move into august then we had the long dark which regan that was uh we did a stream of that i believe yeah we did i really liked the long dark um, and I only really stopped playing it because I sort of had a, um, I think I went away for a weekend or something and it just kind of broke the broke the mm. chain, I guess, as far as, uh, yep. as that game goes. You know, it happens with games. Long Dark's a phenomenal game, really sort of quite simple and stark in its, um, in its mechanics, uh, but it kind of, it's just what you need. Like, it's, it's, it, they haven't done anything extra. Um, survival game, get lost out in the wilderness, you have to manage your kind of heat, you know, body warmth and resources and all that kind of thing, um, and just survive basically. I, I, yeah, I really liked it. The the art style was really nice. Um, good level of difficulty. Uh, there was a story to it which I never actually finished because really the the sandboxy kind of modes were the best. Um, yeah, great game. If you're into that sort of survival stuff, it's it's a very different twist. There's no monsters or anything, just wolves and, and bears that can kill you in a, in a couple hits. So, yeah, check it out. It was really good. Really good. I, I really enjoyed the the mental image Regan I got of, of it just being like the most cracker of a Wellington day. Regan's inside on this on this computer and um <laughs> and your girlfriend walks in and is like, Regan, let's go to the beach or something. And you're just like, no, I'm in the mountains. And you're just like, you know crafting a fire or something and you're barely alive and it's yeah. like no, i'm really into this that's not far from what happened it's, yeah <laughs> yeah it's like, i'm stalking this deer i need to get it yeah the thing about that game I need to... yeah and i think i mentioned this a couple of times is that it kind of it's you know like bethesda and skyrim are always like the player crafts their own story and all that kind oh, of bollocks yeah. this is the this yeah. is the kind of game that actually does that so you mm. go out and like i genuinely think that if i had kept notes on 
what had happened each day and sort of written it out like a diary, it would have been a really compelling yeah. story. Like you just, you go, oh, today I'm going to do this. But then you go out and you try and do it and a storm rolls in or you break your leg somehow or that kind of thing. And then what is a, just a totally normal kind of day and what you're going to try and achieve just becomes this massive fight for survival. And like you have this real sense of, sort of exhaustion and relief when you do get back to some shelter and you get a fire going and you're like oh thank god it's like man surviving out there would be nearly impossible mm-hmm. you know it's it's a fucking sweet game it's really cool and that is that still was that an early access when you picked it up no it was just after it had been it's released. fully re- full release yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah awesome awesome very good well that i don't think that's available on consoles it is available on steam though so you can go and go and check that one out uh, we had Tacoma, which I'm really interested. Again, I haven't been able to play this. This is by the Fulbright people who did um, Gone Home, um, which was a game that I really enjoyed until the big reveal, and then I thought it was terrible. <laughs> so <laughs> I was not happy with the way that that game ended. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm in, I'm intrigued by Tacoma. It's sort of like Gone Home, but in space, in your own deserted kind of space station thing, and. Looks looks interesting. Walking simulator type game as as they've come to be known. Mm. Um, but yeah, we had Telltale Batman uh, episode one came out, which I don't know. Probably play that at some point. It's coming out on Switch, so kind of intrigued. I mean, <laughs> the Telltale fatigue is real again. Mm. Very very real. They're doing what are they doing? Marvel. What's his face? Guardians of the Guardians Galaxy. Of the Galaxy. Um, they're doing another. Oh, I think they're doing Stranger Things or something. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're just jumping on all those properties. All eh? the bad wing um, and wagons. Yeah, yeah. I I really want to see them tackle something really <laughs> tricky, like making a murderer or, um, you know, Telltale's just something real, something based on real life that would be hard <laughs> as to do. <laughs> Maybe, uh, what's like the really boring political drama? Like Telltale's The West Wing or something. Telltale <laughs> making a Telltale game. Oh, <laughs> man. Just the old meta. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> in, in. Making a Telltale, yeah. Office dramas. <laughs> From the guys who bought you every other Telltale game. <laughs> um, then we had Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice. Now, I know Balthazar was a, was a pretty much a... a I don't know, massive fan, would you say, Balthazar? Or you really liked this game anyway? I thought it was a good game. Yeah. Um, yeah, I well, for some reason, I also thought it was a bad game for some reasons. So, mm. mixed. mixed. Mixed fan. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> mm. yeah. Did, uh, Mike, did you did you play this? Yeah, I played it. I, I enjoyed it. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I can see what Balthazar is saying. Like, it's not a game that warrants more than one playthrough. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. I think I think my issue with with it was like, um, it seemed a little bit slow paced, uh, and so like it's supposed to be sort of a bit of a terrifying experience, like playing through it. But I, I found it quite relaxing because she's just doing the, like a slow jog the whole time, and mm. oh, okay, and most enemies like you can kill fairly easily, and then yeah, like once you clear an area, you're safe, so you just you know meander around solving some puzzles which aren't too uh, difficult yeah um, yeah but Balthazar yeah. I remember championed the puzzle solving part to me he he, he really thought I'd dig that that mm. aspect of it yeah had some cool puzzles um, and the sort of the the addressing of mental health and psychosis and things like that mm, um, mm. you know I, I don't really know much about it and um, I'm keen as to play it but I, I heard that mentioned and I was immediately intrigued um, if a mm. game can sort of start using that as a metaphor kind of thing yeah. or using gameplay I mechanics think, yeah, it was really I well think done. that's the weakest part of the game by far for me like that was what I always sort of thought like that was my that was my mixed part of it um, I don't know why people sort of loud that as being such a you know revolutionary or great concept in the game I think it was by far the weakest part of that game was them trying to ham fist that uh, sort of narrative in there because they didn't stay consistent enough to it and it didn't work very well Man, that's a, that's a real shame. I think mm. that was those those guys' first game, if I'm not very much mistaken. Um, mm. And I also remember something you said, Balthazar, which was it was the best graphics you'd ever seen. Yeah, on PC. Um, yeah. There were yeah there were just some parts of it where I looked at it and I was like, oh yeah, undoubtedly, like this section here is graphically the best thing I've ever seen mm. in a game. 
Um, I mean, it's not like I've played every game ever made, um, but certainly, yeah, on PC, Senua's Sacrifice had a lot of like environmental areas in it which just looked amazing. Yeah, I mean, they look can perfect. say the same thing for as well. And even even like um, if you like move the camera around and look look close up to her face, and there's like you can see the the mud caked on her like her, her face and stuff. Like yeah, it looks all really amazing. I love I love that sort of stuff. That game will probably take me way too long to finish because I'll just be <laughs> looking Staring at cloth yeah. physics and yeah. mud mud caked on people's faces and things. Um, we had a we had an interesting game next, which was Lawbreakers, which is one of the biggest flops I've ever seen of, of anything. <laughs> this was a game from Cliff Blazinski of Unreal Tournament fame, and he was sort of trying to break into that um, I don't know if you want to call it hero shooter market of uh, Overwatch and. Um, what was the other one that came around that time? Uh, Over oh, what was, that? was the successful one? So. Yeah, what what was the Battle really good one? <laughs> Battleborn. Battle Battle oh yeah, Battleborn. Thank you. Thank Not you. about Thank that. that I think that's because that wasn't a hero shit. That was like a MOBA. That was an FPS yeah. MOBA. Like it had lane pushing and stuff. That was a it was, yeah. That was yeah. a weird they, one. <laughs> they really coddled those two games. They they sort of like had those two games together though. Everyone was comparing Overwatch to. Battleborn one you could buy for two dollars in a bargain bin and one was full price <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah i don't know lawbreakers was was quite interesting because i've never really liked clip blizzinski that much he seems like a bit of an arrogant prick to me um every time he's just like yeah my games are the shit and they're chainsaw guys and they're all real buff <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's like you know gears of war as well and um lawbreakers came out and just flopped hard no one gave a shit about that game <laughs> so it's Pretty pretty interesting uh, thing to watch. We had Sonic Mania, which we did a stream of, and Regan loved it. Yeah, very cool game. Um, I still I haven't finished it, and that's because perhaps it's uh, too hard for me. But um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, it was very cool. It was uh, it's in a nutshell a, a really imaginative recreation of the original kind of Sonic trilogy, I suppose, along yep. with added uh, added mechanics and added levels and things by um, you know by by the guys that that did the the game. Uh, yeah, really cool, and another great game on Switch, like another perfect fit for that that mm. platform. So yeah, yeah, hard to hard to say no at that. And I and I'm remember, I think it was only like thirty bucks or something like that. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. It was cheaper on Switch than PS4. I remember that much. Um, and it was also a game that came from a fan game. And and Sega just saw this dude making a cool Sonic game. It was like, hey man, do you want to make a fully licensed Sonic game instead and make a bunch of money? He's like, hell yeah. <laughs> um, and it did really well. Yeah. So it's I don't know. It's a really good a feel good story that's yeah. come instead of Nintendo squashing Eddie and every mm, all the fan games. You know, you know, it's obviously Sega and Nintendo are different, but. Nintendo always squashing fan games like um the the Metroid one that they they culled this year. And the Pokemon I one. The name of it. Uh, and the Pokemon, yeah, absolutely, yeah, the Pokemon one. Um, <clears throat> we had Uncharted: The Lost Legacy, which Mike and I have both finished. I yep. think. Uh, yep. What did, What did you think of this, Mike? Oh, I absolutely loved it. Eh, I mean, it's more yep. more Uncharted. Um, yep. But I, I think this one, like, it's not not as long as a, a regular Uncharted game, but it, the length to me uh, seemed just about perfect. Yeah, and um, it was probably about eight hours or something like that. I yeah, would say. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just just absolutely loved the um, yeah uh, the gameplay story was pretty cool. I thought. Um, yeah. And yeah, the last level just blew me away. <laughs> did, did you re- did you enjoy spending time with um, Chloe and Nadine? Uh, yeah, they're all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're um, fine. They're fine. Yeah. like I, I was never a big fan of like chloe um before this but yeah yeah i mean i suppose she's all right you learn a bit more about <laughs> her kind of thing she's, she's yeah. okay yeah yeah lost like see yeah 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 um you don't get to play as nadine interestingly mm. enough which i thought was going to be the case so there's going to be chopping and changing between those two but uh, just chloe really yeah. and but the, i don't know there's a moment in that game which was very similar to the giraffes in The Last of Us, which mm. I absolutely adored. Mm. Um, can you can you sort of figure out what I'm talking about the, there, Mike? The, I'm being a the bit elephants? Vague. The elephants. Mm. 
Do they yeah. just recycle so, the exact same sand, put, but put elephants in there? I into? imagine so. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing. <laughs> like you go through like, this massive like cover-based shooting section and then you t- both just burst out onto a roof above like a, you know, a, a sort of a, an overgrown, overgrown city and then some elephants walk through and they're like, <laughs> whoa, and then one of them weirdly has the same voice as Joe. As, uh, as jo- <laughs> <laughs> Troy Baker somehow made it in. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Very Troy great. Baker voiced both Nadine and Chloe, by the way. And elephant number three. <laughs> and elephant, yeah. No, I love, I love it. I love that section. It was great. Yeah. Um, and it was only, oh, I traded in a bunch of games for that. I ended up getting it for like 40 bucks, so I was pretty happy with that. Um, Mike, did you pick that? I, mean, I think it was on sale for about 60 I think, at regular retail price. Yeah, I think I got it off the PlayStation Store, so it was like 60 or 70 Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Which I, is, I was pretty happy. Um, we then move into Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, which no one saw. I mean, when it was announced that we'll get to Nintendo and Ubisoft a bit later on, but when this partnership was announced, whew, people were mad. <laughs> <laughs> I was more confused than mad, but uh, man, the internet was not happy about this. <laughs> so, um, I mean, it was pretty. I, I loved Ubisoft's, re, re, you know, reveal of this game at E3 with Eve Guillermo and um, Shigeru Miyamoto both just being these cheesy old men posing with these laser blaster guns and things. And <laughs> yeah. uh, it was great. It was so good. And the game is apparently really, really good. Um, Balthazar picked this one up, eh? Mm, yeah. And it really was enjoyed a good one. It. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it, it was a surprising step, as we've already noted for Nintendo. <laughs> but no, it was a yeah, surprisingly good game. Yeah, it was a sort of XCOM style Mario. Mm. Um, well, you don't even really control Mario. You control that Roomba vacuum cleaner thing. That, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, really, really good. Oh, I don't know. It doesn't really seem like my sort of thing, but it's still Nintendo, so I'm like, they can't do any wrong. So I'm uh, thinking about picking this up at some point on Switch as well, sometime with all my my Shovel Knights and my Mario Odysseys. Um, But yeah, Yakuza Kiwami, which is the uh, remake of Yakuza, the first Yakuza game, I think. Um, I think that's correct, but that came out in August. Again, another Yakuza game. Keen as to play all of these when I can. Um, just looks insane, but it's cool to know it's out there. Uh, the last thing to come out in August was Life is Strange Before the Storm, which is sort of the new Life is Strange, first episode of the new Life is Strange or whatever. Um, I don't have many thoughts on this. I Again, I, I, I played 10 to 15 minutes of Life is Strange <laughs> when it was free. Absolutely hated it. Yeah, like, I was going to say, of, mo- moving on. Oh, just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I remember my just visceral reaction to this game, and I, I've, I've never... It's not often that I just hate a video. I'm usually very apathetic if something's like boring. I just oh, you chug through it, put on a podcast or whatever, and play it. But this I really hated. Like <laughs> this really. Hated. So um, no desire whatsoever to investigate this one. September, Nak two. <laughs> Nak two came out, and Nak has kind of been a joke of the industry for a while now. Mark Cerny was the one of the chief PS4 architects. Um, and I think PS3 and maybe in PS2. But this was sort of his weird pet project, the original Knack was, and I don't know, it didn't get particularly good reviews. It wasn't terrible, but it just kind of became a joke. It was just, everyone was just like, why Knack? Why does anyone give a shit about this guy? <laughs> like, he's a terrible, um, <laughs> terrible sort of mascot platformer. And then... Mm. Knack got a sequel for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I heard about one of the Knacks. I can't remember if it was one or two, but basically they were touting like like you, you couldn't jump. There wasn't like a proper jump button or something like that. But every time you oh. needed to jump over an object, it essentially turned into a cutscene. And you'd like, oh man, get over this object <laughs> and then keep going. <laughs> oh, like, that's pretty brutal. <laughs> context, context sensitive jumping. Yeah, yeah, and he's like, oh, yeah, it's this new feature, like, context-sensitive jumping, and it's just like... No, it's just... <laughs> it's not a feature, mate. Yeah, it's, it's, that's yeah. awful, man. Yeah. It reminds me of the, the Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone game on PS1, which had the same thing. You could only jump when there was a gap to be jumped. Mm, mm. It was horrible. Horrible. 
But um, I don't know. NAC 2 was reviewed a lot better than the original NAC. I'll say that much. I played the demo. Still not wowed by it. But um, pfft, might pick it up when it's like 15 bucks or something. Maybe. I like Mike Cerny. He's got a nice smile. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a nice enough guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we had Destiny 2 come out and then Destiny 2 on PC uh, in October. But Balthazar, you, you were going to pick up Destiny 2. You, you did pick it up. What do you think of it? Yeah. Uh, Destiny 1, but the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's it. If you like the first, you like this one. If you didn't, move on. Yeah. <laughs> There's uh, shaders, which are now only single use. Yeah, which everyone was was pretty angry about. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Destiny lost all my goodwill with their bloody, I don't know, terrible first game and also their Red Bull promotion. Um, that was that was the real kick in the teeth that they had with the original Destiny. Was they had a Red Bull, but you know, buy a can of Red Bull and you get an XP boost or something. I was like, this is not why I like gaming. Mm. Um, you know, it's just like God, I'm not supporting this. <laughs> this is terrible. But uh, I don't know. It was a tight shooter. Again, Bungie never make bad shooters uh, in terms of controls and and mechanics and things like that. But I just didn't agree with the whole ethos behind Activision, what Activision did with it, and Bungie, I guess, by proxy sort of thing. So Destiny 2 seems like a good game. Um, Might pick it up when it's really cheap, but yeah. We had uh, Divinity Original Sin, which I've heard is one of the best RPGs of all time. Mm, Yeah, Um, um, and Divinity Original Original Sin (laughs) 2 apparently is even better. Um, It'll be something that I pick up probably on like a Steam sale or something like that. Um, I've played the first one and it is fantastic. Did you finish the first one? I didn't finish it, no. Yeah, I I played it years ago, but um, it was still when it was quite... I'm not sure if this was a problem with it, but um, it was still quite new. It might have even been an early access at that point. I'm not sure. But um, I just got to a point where, um, yeah, I couldn't progress because the battles had become too hard. Oh, I just... And oh, right. you couldn't really go back because once you cleared out an area, the enemies were gone. So right. I couldn't really go back and do some grinding to improve. Yeah. Oh, so I just got to a point where it, like, I just couldn't progress. Mm. Um, For, from the reviews that I've seen of, mm. of the second one, it's... Um, yeah, well, it, it, like like you say, one of the best RPGs ever made. So mm. that's a pretty big deal, I guess. But yeah, I don't know what it is. It, it probably the first one didn't like. It was great. It didn't probably didn't inspire me to be like, yeah, the second one. I'm going to go out and buy this on day one or whatever like that. Mm. But um, yeah, yeah, there you go. It came out. It was a thing. Mm. <laughs> Lots of lots of really interesting. Uh, I don't know. I've heard that game touted as as one of those games that have tons of different mechanics, and the way those mechanics interweave with one another mm. is the real star of the show. Like you can have a dude with lightning abilities, and he can, you know, shock. You can have a dude with water abilities as well, and he can mm. lay down water, mm. and the other guy can shock the water and, and stuff like that. Yeah, um, yeah, that was a big so, part of Original Sin One as well. Well, yeah, yeah, just sort of like the the elements and the environment things like that um cropping up so you, like you most of the time it like screwed me over in a big way because you know my whole party <laughs> would get poisoned and then exploded and just wiped out immediately <laughs> so you to, like, oh man be real careful avoiding stuff like that so, yeah <laughs> ruthless yeah. uh we had metroid samus returns now I, I believe this was a 3ds game um balthazar did you you played this during your metroid binge no i didn't um, oh, you didn't play this because one because I would require buying it as a full price new release, um, right. which I don't do for handheld games. Uh, heard amazing things though. I played the original Metroid Two: Return of Samus um, that Samus Returns is a remake of, um, and I've seen stuff from this remake, and it looks. I mean, it's getting sort of nines and and nine point fives and stuff. Like it's a really faithful remake that just updates a lot of the systems and and makes it quality so not that anyone out there still has a 3ds but there you go. <laughs> yeah it's a yeah it's a it's a console that's uh it's on the leave <laughs> unfortunately because mm. the switch is too damn good which we'll talk about later as well but um steam world dig 2 which i i played steam world dig 1 on 3ds surprisingly enough and really enjoyed it. It was just a repetitive mining game. And I, sometimes I just wanted that, you know, just go down into the earth, mine some gems, 
come back up, sell them, go back and buy better mining tools so you can mine more gems and sell them and get better mining tools. Um, I don't know. I enjoyed it. It was good. It was good for what it was. And Steam World Dig 2 just seems to be more of that. So I'll probably pick that up at some point as well. Seems really good. Um, Guild Wars 2 Path of Fire, which was Balthazar's bag as well. And um, yep. was that the one that expanded the world quite considerably? It did, yeah. So yep. just added a huge amount of extra areas to go to. Um, yeah, same same story as Stormblood, really. Good. Yep. Did what did what it said it would. Nice. Continuing on the essentially just keeping the legacy going of that, of yeah. that franchise, right? Yeah. Me. Um, and then the final thing we had for September was Cuphead, which I, I haven't played because I do have an Xbox One and my PC will probably blow up if I tried to play even Cuphead on it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but man, that game looks good. I'm so pumped to play Cuphead. It looks, the art style is amazing. It's so good. Just mm. testament to that, you know, 1930s Disney style. And they've just captured that so perfectly and the music as well. Um, yeah, really, really pumped. Has, has anyone else checked this out or have any desire to whatsoever? I maybe would play it one day, but it's sort of when I think about the actual kind of mechanics and things, I'm not sure if it would really be my jam. Like the whole, because yeah. essentially, sort of like a side scrolling, <clears throat> um, like boss game, really. And, mm. and, and from, from what I've seen, one of those ones, Metal Slug. It used mm. to, before mm. it was going to be, before it was going to be just bosses. Um, but then Cuphead sort of they saw the potential behind it they saw how many people were really int- interested by this game from the E3 showing and they decided to put actual full on levels in it so yeah there's, I think there's a boss at the end of every level right, right. but um, yeah, there's actual levels not just a string of boss fights kind of thing mm. maybe one day mm. yeah nice nice it's getting really good reviews anyway um, moving into October we had Forza 7 which I don't think anyone's played yeah no nah. Uh, yes, another racing game kind of thing. Shadow of War is where it gets interesting because <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't expecting this game to be uh, for, for Balthazar to essentially tear this game a new one as much as you did. <laughs> um, thought it was going to be at least like pretty pretty good kind of thing, and it just doesn't seem to be that way. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Mike, you play Shadow of War as well? No, um, I was on the fence about getting it, and um, yeah, because I, I I was a little bit hyped for it because I look cool. Um, but, and I I got um, Shadow. I was trying to remember the name of the first one, Shadow of Mordor. Um, yep. So in anticipation, and played through that again on the PS4. Um, nice. But then, but then there are all the controversies about you know the loot boxes and microtransactions and the um, the fourth hog um, dude. If that was yep, his name, yeah, um, yeah. So I decided to give him this, and it, it looked the um, the gameplay looked much similar to um, Shadow of Mordor, and so yeah, having like, having just played that, like, yeah, just I don't think I'm ready for it just yet. I mean, I might, yeah, I might yeah. wait a year or so. Um, you know, might might be time to pick it up later on, but yeah, just not at the moment. Yeah, so it sounded, from what Balthazar said, it was a lot of the same, mm. um, and that's why he wasn't really a fan of it. It was just a big slog kind of thing, and it was mm. it was copy and paste of Shadow of Mordor, really, in terms of just doing the same old rinse and repeat. Yeah, um, and it, take over generals, and and it sounded like um, you know from putting it in all the the loot boxes and stuff. Was it did that one have loot boxes? Yeah, yeah, oh, it's yeah. like oh, the yeah, like that the it, the gameplay sort of suffered from that. Yep. So yeah. Unfortunate, we'll man. See. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll later. get to loot boxes. We we'll get to loot boxes later on because those have been a running theme of this year. Um, but the Evil Within two. Now, this was another one that you played, Balthazar. You played the Evil Within one, mm. um, and wasn't a fan, if I remember correctly. Not at all. No. And the Evil Within two. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Continues on that trend of uh, yeah. Bethesda's. <laughs> unfortunate but um i don't know I've, I've been i've seen this getting reasonable reviews um the evil within two i don't know hmm. yeah people are blind and foolish <laughs> 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 yeah i don't have any desire whatsoever to play this i admire shinji mikami because he's risen evil dude but uh yeah just not not my not my bag um michael regan either of you guys 
No. Nah. 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 Uh, GT Sport, Regan, this was you. We did a stream of GT Sport uh, two weeks ago. Yep. Uh, and you, you're a fan. Yeah, it's, um, a, good, somewhat. it's a good game. It um, has its problems. Uh, yep. It just kind of needs a bit more, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, the core game, the actual sort of online play is really fun. But yeah, I think it, for me, it's just kind of a lack of content and things, which they'll probably fix with updates and stuff. Well, I hope so. Mm. Um, so it's sort of a flawed game at release, but I think um, eventually it'll become quite a cool thing and there should be a, hopefully a good community around it. So yeah, that's cool. It's good. Nice. nice. Does does everything it was I promised to do, but maybe needs a little bit more content there. Yeah, a bit of time. Give it some time. Give it six months. Nice. I'm sure it'll be great. Yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, we've got South Park, The Fractured But Whole, which I picked up and played about four hours and, and enjoyed it. Um, but then Mario Odyssey came out and again ruined my life um, in the best way possible. Did uh, who, who else played The Fractured But Whole? I've got it. Haven't played it yet. Just haven't had the time. Yeah. Um, it'll, yeah. it'll happen. Um, yeah. I kind of is what it is it seems to me like it's you know there's additions to the battle system and things like that but it, it's just it's kind of more of the, the the original game which is which is probably a good thing um yeah but yeah we just haven't found the time yet mike do you do you play this one at all no no so it's another uh, ubisoft nope. um <laughs> not, not that that's what's putting me off about this game like i probably would like to play it but um i did yep. try playing the the first one like i, I tried twice to to get into it but i just couldn't get into it so I think maybe it's not your bag. Not my bag, yeah. Ah, fair enough, man. Um, Assassin's Creed Origins. Now, Regan, this was all you, buddy. Yeah, mm-hmm. I still plan on picking this up and playing it. Um, yeah. I just again haven't had time. It's been this month's been crazy yeah. for me. Um, the yeah, I, I'm probably going to give it the best shout it can and get it on PC because apparently it's a lot better to look at um, oh, than mm. you know. I I've been hearing it's got like pretty bad. layers of drm oh really so we've got steam there, which is DRM you play itself, or you play uh and then there's like two other like drm oh. they've chucked in there oh wow um and apparently it just like really brings down the performance huh yeah so oh, maybe, maybe look into that yeah um, okay so before, maybe maybe before I'll, you commit maybe, yeah so. maybe i won't do that mm. um <laughs> but yeah it's on the cards it's on it's on the the to-do list for sure um I'm looking forward to actually seeing what it's like um, firsthand. Yeah, yeah. the The combat has apparently been changed quite considerably, so mm. I'm I'm interested to hear your thoughts on the combat. Yeah, it looks a bit more like The Witcher, which mm. yeah, we'll see. Mm. I enjoyed I enjoyed the combat in The Witcher once I got the ha- the hang of it, but um, probably not the most fun combat that I've played in the game. Yeah, it, it's yeah, I, I'd agree with that. It'll just be interesting to see how um, Ubisoft pilfers the idea, I guess. <laughs> Which is, <yeah>. No. <laughs> oh, man. Poor, poor old... No, no, I won't say that. <laughs> not, poor old Ubisoft, not poor old Ubisoft at all. They have a trillion dollars. Um, Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus. This is a game I am absolutely dying to play, and Balthazar mm. has finished it, and he has given it uh, a, a very high recommendation indeed. Mm. Um I think mm. it, it well, it was Mike's copy I borrowed as well, so he's uh, oh nice, he's yeah. finished it too. Yeah. Good game. Um, yeah, either, good game. Either of you guys will you speak on it? Yeah. Um, my my thoughts on it. Um, so I, yeah, I was talking to Belsar about it. Um, but if you watch, uh, yeah, Jim Sterling did like a review on it, and like I think he sort of expressed my feeling about it a bit better than I did. But um, like. You just feel like it, it feels a lot different than the first one. Um, hmm. uh, like it, it, it's harder. So like I found that I was getting killed really often. Um, it, like basically, if you get flanked by anybody, if anyone comes up behind you or from the side, they'll just like unload a clip into you, and you'll just die straight away. Hmm. So you do, right. you do feel real vulnerable, um, rather than a, a bit badass, which I think. Um, you feel in the first one um yeah so i think yeah that that sort of i didn't enjoy as much um as i did the first one but yeah the story is um on next level like really really great enjoyable story um some mm. really cool and intense moments in it so yeah awesome man yeah. i i love I mean, still, still really good, good so, order yeah 
yeah. the new order was fantastic and i remember some of the moments in that game um especially around the concentration camp areas mm. just blew me away it was like yeah some as you mentioned some of the most intense moments i've had in gaming was just yeah <laughs> just and, and the level of, of violence in that game is insane like, yes <laughs> fuck. yeah yeah that's one too that's one too yeah yeah <laughs> keeps up that trend nice nice yeah. oh well i mean it, it's not gratuitous though it, it's like serves a point it makes you realize oh I'm, you know it strengthens the idea that these are bloody awful people mm-hmm. kind of thing. so no really really looking forward to that i i'm tempted to buy it i really shouldn't because <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm i need to save my money to to live overseas and figure out how the hell i'm what i'm going to do over there yeah. um but uh yeah i'd I just re- I really want to. I'm 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 scared of this being spoiled for me, like in any way, shape, or form. I'm terrified, so I'm just kind of media blackout yeah. on Wolfenstein to a wee bit. I got a few spoilers um, from my YouTube um, page, my YouTube home feed page. Oh yeah. Oh was, really? Yeah, I was, I was super pissed off about that. So. Oh man, that's bullshit. But, um, got to yeah, got to keep an eye on that. I hate that shit. Eh? When yeah. people just put that on the it's, thumbnail. Yeah, it's like tight. right in the thumbnail. I'm just. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. fuck those channels man mm. fuck those channels we we'll never do that um, the final game to come out October was Super Mario Odyssey and <laughs> Super fucking this, Mario fucking Odyssey man this game <laughs> is I, I won't say literally all I'll be doing because that's not true but it's it's as close as you come to that term without actually you know being fully true to it I put in about 40 hours into SMOD as we called it now, um, and I've got a 475 moons out of 999, I believe. There is. <laughs> <A lot of laughs> so moons. it's a lot of moons. That's plus 100 hours by the time I finish with this game. Um, it's I'm just loving it. It's just the stakes are so low. There's such inventive mechanics that are thrown away it, as Nintendo does. They have some really cool idea that someone's obviously worked really hard on for months. And then you play it for ten minutes, and then it's you never see it again in the rest of the game. Um, it's it's awesome. It's such a such a phenomenal game. The hat is a is a literal game changer. Um, <laughs> being able to possess things is insane. There's so many troubling questions this game poses, which just adds <laughs> another layer to to it for me. Which is you know, what happens to these people when I possess them? Like even the frogs and things like that. I. What happens to the frog brain? Where, where does what's he doing while I'm in there? Like, is he just going? No, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh, yeah, just there's a there's a really cool moment when you first when you possess your first thing, which is a frog, um, and you're sort of going through this crazy looking drug infused vortex thing, and for this most brief of of, of you know moments, a real life face of a frog just pops up and it made me laugh so much i was like smitten by this game at that point i was just like this game is insane and i love it it's so good <laughs> but uh, yeah we'll talk about smod a bit later on as well because it's definitely going to come up during the awards um we've just kicked into november we're and we're in the i mean we're midway through november i guess but we've had call of duty world war ii uh which i don't think anyone's played kind of I, i'm i'm intrigued by it i'm definitely not going to play full price um no one else has played this i'm assuming no 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 no, no, no real no real desires to uh we've had sonic forces which i think is that new gritty sonic game so sonic mania was the fun one and and Sonic Forces was the <laughs> and this one's not fun. This is not. It's 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 back to the trend of Sonic games being awful um, mm. by the by the sounds of the reviews. So yeah, don't really care much for that. And we've got Doom on Switch, which just came out, which is awesome. Mm. Which I'll pick up when it's when it's you know a decent price because um, Doom is great, and I think that's unanimous. Everyone thinks Doom is great, yeah. right? I think it was my game of the year last year, actually. Doom. Ah, yeah, oh, nice probably. man. I could, I could definitely see that. Yeah, it, t- it took out best soundtrack. I remember from uh, Overcast yeah. Gamer. Um, but that brings us to the end of the recap because we we haven't hit December yet. We still have Star Wars Battlefront Two to come, uh, and we still have Xenoblade Chronicles Two to come, mm. uh, or Xenoblade Chronicles X Two. Nah, just Chronicles Two. Just, just Chronicles Two. Yeah, so we've still got those two to come, which are the the two two biggies. Um, so I don't know these guys might do another podcast I'm fucking off to Europe for two months so I will be AFK um, but yeah maybe maybe talk about those two but 
I think it's time that we get into the very coveted Overcast Gamer presents the 2017 OCG Awards. <laughs> we